All right. Um, I can see more people are joining. Nairobi. Peter from Nairobi. Kivali also from Kenya. Melissa from Ghana. More from Nairobi. Good, good. We're getting a lot of people lately connecting from, from Africa and from Kenya, from Ghana, from Nigeria. There's a lot of interest in people looking at Dubai as a place for them to relocate their businesses. And, and given today's world of where everybody is sort of this nomad entrepreneur and that you're a global entrepreneur, it allows you to set up your business and, and operate globally. So let's get started and, and then I'm sure more people will join in as, as we go along. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's already the afternoon here in Dubai, 102. Welcome to a Creative Zone webinar. Here on the call, we have three of our top business setup advisors and managers. We have Alistair Payne, Romel Gams, and Jamie Harvey. Alistair, Romel, and Jamie, thank you so much for connecting and for, for being here with us on this webinar. Thank you. Thank so you. perhaps to, to get started, maybe Alistair, take us, what would you say, what are the main benefits of, 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 of setting up a company in, in Dubai? Why is it that you hear most of the clients that you deal with? Why is it that people come and inquire about setting up a business? Yeah, thank you. And, and good afternoon to everyone uh, who's tuning in. It's great to see so many um, people joining from so many international countries. Um, fantastic. So Dubai, I would say on the UAE as a whole, not just Dubai, um, I think it's one of the best destinations on the planet to, to set up a company. And for the following reasons, the first, and I'd say one of the most obvious ones is the tax environment here. There is no corporation tax, no personal income tax. There's no capital gains tax. I mean, tax is very, very limited here to pretty much just value added tax. So from having a business from a tax perspective, there are there are clear advantages. Um, and I would say it's one of the best tax environments in the world. Secondly, I would say it's one of the safest countries in the world. I've lived here myself over 20 years. I don't think I lock my door at night and haven't done so for the last 15. Um, I'm not sure where else in the world you can do that, certainly not in the UK. Um, and I would say it's a very stable country in terms of politically. We have a very stable government here. Um, there, is, there is really no, uh, no political turmoil or, or anything like it here as well. So all in all, you've got a a very safe, stable, and very tax-friendly environment. Uh, and I would also say that the sun shines every single day. So that also makes, uh, makes living here even better as well. So I think all of that mixed together makes the UAE and Dubai one of the, one of the best places to live and work in the world. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for that, Alistair. Maybe, Jamie, could we explain what are the different formats by which an investor can set up a company here in Dubai? What are the typical structures that uh, people set up in Dubai. Yeah, of course, Lorenzo. Um, again, just thank you everybody for tuning in today. Um, when setting up a company within the UA, you have three key ways of doing so. Um, and three jurisdictions are offshore, free zone, and Dubai mainland. Uh, typically put, what people tend to do is they look at their options within inside of a free zone and with the mainland company, um, as this allows them to get visas, open up a local bank account, and sponsor their family and live within the UAE. Um, so in a nutshell, you'd find that most people would look for a free zone if they're going to be operating between one country and another, or they're going to be dealing with the private sector. Someone who's actually looking to engage locally within the UAE and actually trade and import goods, for example, may consider setting up an option under the Department of Economic Development, which would be an onshore business. Right. And, and what would you say are the steps? Let's say an investor, one of the attendees is looking at this, at this, at this webinar. What are the required steps? What kind of documents they need to send? What are the timelines that we're, we're, we're talking about? Sure. Um, well, first and foremost, what would it come down to is having a discussion on the business that they're looking to set up. Based on the business activity will dictate what jurisdiction they should be in, it's inside of a free zone or a mainland. Depending on which zone that it is or jurisdiction will actually give you the overall timeline process and requirements. Typically your basic requirements is just a passport copy a passport photo for immigration, your most recent entry stamp when you last entered the UAE, and some basic application forms, which can all be signed and emailed back to us. We do not need any of those in original. However, if you have an existing company, which is a foreign uh, entity, 
and you want that to hold the shares within the UAE, then we would require the parent company documents. Those parent company documents would need to be attested in the UAE embassy in the country of origin. They would then be couriered to the UAE where we would then assist from our concierge department where we'd have them attested again by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and translated into Arabic. Right. Uh, Romel, on to you now. Tell us a little bit about your experience so far. What kind of companies are you usually advising on? What type of clients are reaching out to you and, and you are supporting them in setting up here in Dubai? Yeah. Um, hi. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, thank you, Lorenzo. Um, and obviously, with the, with the current situation, things have slightly changed. I think where people are spending a lot of time at home, they're really looking into different options, what sort of companies they can set up, what opportunities are out there. Um, very common activities, consultancies, uh, management consultancy, that sort of thing. E-commerce has been huge of late. I think with the pandemic, pandemic happening, a lot of people are shopping online and people are taking advantage of that situation. So e-commerce companies have become, become very, very popular. Um, the people that are looking to come to Dubai because obviously it's not been hit too badly with COVID. Um, so a lot of people looking to spend a lot of time here and bring their business over here. It's good for international flights. It's connecting all around the globe. Um, so it's definitely a, the market that you want to be in. But e-commerce consultancy is very, very popular. Um, even existing companies that haven't really delved into the e-commerce sector or online sales have started developing, um, pivoting towards more online business because of the situation. So I would say consultancies, just because people are looking to set their own thing up and start consulting on the industry that they've been in for many, many years, because as you know, a lot of people have lost jobs and that sort of thing. So people are utilizing the experience they've made and setting up their own ventures. Um, and e-commerce companies, very, very popular. How would you explain that an e-commerce company, let's say based in Africa, can set up their company here, operate from Dubai, have their bank account here and be operating globally or in Africa in their regional markets? Yeah, um, like I think Alistair touched on, um, there's a lot of benefits from being here in the UAE. Firstly, tax reasons are a very good option. Also, how connected Dubai is to the rest of the world. There's access to everywhere, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, of course, is a huge market. Um, and it's very, very simple. We'd set up in one of the free zones and we assist you not just with your trade license, not just with your visa, but we can connect you with bankers that can assist you with your banking. We can assist you with helping you introduce you to payment gateways, um, delivery companies, people who can help you set up your website. Um, so this is the reason we're here is to assist people with coming into the country and make it as smooth as possible. People have a lot of ideas, but when it comes to setting up the company, the sort of ins and outs, open bank out, that's what sometimes creates a little bit of hesitancy to people. Um, but that's why we're here to assist with all of these different aspects. Great. Well, to the attendees out there, I see there's about 50 attendees connected. I would like to encourage you to send us on the Q&A section some questions. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about what type of company. Are you a company owner? Are you in a specific industry, in a specific sector? Do you want us to share a little more light on a specific type of company or a specific sector that you are already operating in? And we can share more information through this webinar or also reach out to you after this webinar through email. We can jump on a phone call, etc. So tell us your queries, what information that you would like to learn more about. Maybe Alistair, uh, touch upon those, those topics. What are the areas we can help uh, investors once they decide to, 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 to come to Dubai? And is it in general, is it that we're setting up newly formed companies or are they uh, setting up branches of their existing companies in their own countries? Yeah, uh, thank you, Renzo. It, it's a good question. I mean, to answer that, I would say it's it's definitely a mixture of both. Um, we, we, of course, assist a lot of entrepreneurs, people that are, are doing this for the very first time. And, and equally, we assist some, some very large corporations as well. We've assisted some, some very high profile blue chip um, Fortune 500 companies in expanding their presence here. So it, it, it's definitely a real mix. In terms of where I think we add the most value, I would say our, our initial advice um, and guidance, I think it's difficult to match in this industry. We've been here 10 years. We've helped over 36,000 companies, entrepreneurs set up here. So we, we've seen it all. We, we've seen the, the good, we've seen things go wrong. And all that experience is really at anyone's disposal um, when they come to contact us. So 
our guidance, our support on selecting the correct jurisdiction, and the correct jurisdiction will will be based on on a lot of variables. How is the company operating here? What is the business model? Who are you selling to? Who do you want to do business with here? What are your on the ground requirements? Um, how do you plan on scaling the business in the next three to five years? All of this comes into this melting pot. Um, and then when you when you're faced with a jurisdiction choice, there are over sixty jurisdictions here to set up a company. I mean, if I'm from the UK, there's one, uh, which is Companies House. So that uh, choice can be a little bit overwhelming. And again, coming to a company such as Creative Zone and speaking to one of us, speaking to one of our business setup team, all our consultancies are free. You will get free impartial advice that is based solely on your requirements. So as you've correctly said, anyone that's even thinking about it, please get in touch with us. We're, we're always happy um, and, and free to give give advice um, and I'll pop my email here in the chat box as well so anyone can ask me directly. That's perfect and uh, look we're getting a lot of very good questions I'm going to start reading out a few of these and I encourage all the attendees please put your questions in the Q&A we're going to start addressing them and Alistair, Jamie and Romel yes please include your email addresses there so that the attendees can get in touch with you and, and, and seek further information. Um, a good question here, and the usual one about pricing. Donitrus is asking uh, Jamie, what is the lowest price by which one can set up a company in the UAE? Great question, probably the most sought after question as well. Um, it really comes down to the business type and that you're looking to set up. We have options for as low as, as 5,700 dirhams. Um, and then we have other options that range from 8,500 dirhams within mainland. It would really depend, Lorenzo, depending on the type of business, what their overall requirements are in terms of local sponsor or is it free trade zone. Once we determine the business activity, perhaps we could even have a meeting after this. We can advise you a little bit further on what options are available for you. Excellent. Just for the purpose of, of understanding, so about 5,700 dirhams or so 6,000 dirhams equals to around $1,600. And then there's other options for about 8,000 dirhams it's about $2,300, $400. So for about $2,000, you get a license-only package that is called that allows you to hold a company and operate a business that you can use as a trade license, allows you to open a bank account. And with this, you're able to start operating around the world. You don't need to, at that time, organize for your visa, residency visa, depending if you're looking to relocate and live here as well. Those are within different packages and options that we are more than happy to send you. Maybe Romel, a good question here. It says, hi, I'm Maureen Ademba from Kenya. How do you handle taxation on e-commerce companies that are maybe set up in Dubai, but operating in different parts of the world? Uh, you're on mute. Sorry guys, I was talking to myself. Um, the, the only tax that's needed here is VAT, which is 5% on anything over 380,000 dirhams of business, um, which is $100,000. Uh, but this is only taxed on products that are sold here in the UAE. Um, so we also have a tax and accounting team that can assist you with this. Um, so it's just a matter of once you hit that threshold, then you need to seek advice from one of our tax and accounting team to get a, a VAT number um, and, and start working that way. But like I said, it's the only tax that's required here. Um, so you don't have to worry about that until you hit $100,000 of business. And that's a good sign because it means that you're bringing a lot of revenue into the company. Indeed, Maureen, we have an entire department or company, uh, individual company called Creative Zone Tax and Accounting, who is able to give you advice on all the tax issues that relate to this type of company that you set up in Dubai and how would that influence your taxation in your case in, in Kenya or in other countries around the world? Maybe Alistair, another good question that uh, relates to, to, to the law. It says, I'm an entrepreneur with an investor and I need to know what are the judicial processes and speed in resolving issues. Okay, um, it, it, it's a good question. I say the legal sort of landscape here in the UAE can be quite tricky to navigate as well. And again, you know, some of our guidance and support will be to advise on these areas. We even have a, a credit zone legal department um, where you can get sort of specified legal device. I mean, in terms of answering that question it would really depend on the issue um, and would obviously depend on, on sort of what agreements you're putting in place or having in place um, between the investors. Um, we, 
I always recommend to, to clients where there are a couple of investors involved with differing roles. Let's get a different shareholders agreement. Let's define the roles of each investor. I think it's always good to define the roles of each investor from the outset. So in case that there are issues down the line, you know, you've got something in writing um, to sort of refer to. So um, if, if I think Peter asked that question, if he wants to pop me an email, I'd be happy to answer it and I'm happy to connect to uh, our in-house legal department who can assist as well. Excellent. Peter, feel free to reach out to Alistair on this and he'll be able to send you more information. Uh, Jamie, uh, a good question here. Any insights in setting up a digital marketing company? Yes, of course. Um, a digital marketing company can be set up within a mainland or a free zone. The overall answer to summarize that is if you're going to be working with government entities within the UAE, then you should be regulated on shore. If you are looking to have that element of future proofing the business to have a physical office space, then you should be on shore. But if you're looking for an option which just gives you a visa, a bank account and a license to start invoicing, then a free trade zone is perfectly acceptable for setting up. Excellent. Um, Mimi Romel, you can help with this one. Will is saying, hi, thanks for all the great input so far. I have set up a Shams company online consultancy for garden design. I need advice in opening a company a bank account, please. Uh, he's sponsoring his wife's visa, etc. cetera. Will, we'll get uh, in touch with you. Uh, Romel, maybe you can write to Will or we'll get in touch with Romel. He'll help you out with setting up a, a bank account. Um, Melissa is saying, we're interested in establishing a children's party entertainment company. Is that properly suited for onshore registration? Maybe Jamie, you are suited for this kind of DD onshore or what would be more suited for, for a children's party entertainment company? Yeah, of course. Um, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Melissa. I've actually had the pleasure of assisting with a couple of companies doing something similar within the UAE. So yes, in a, in a short summary, your answer um, is yes, the company should be regulated by the Department of Economic Development within Dubai, simply because you're going to be engaging with clientele face to face um, within the mainland. Um, one of the key things to note, um, just in terms of your initial research, is that this company can also be owned 100% by an expatriate, similar enough to a free zone, meaning the shares reside 100% within your name. This business can also be set up without renting any physical office space. So again, Dubai or onshore, shall we say, have given the ability, like free trade zones, to own certain businesses 100% without renting any physical office space. So absolutely, yes. And more than happy to share with you the actual requirements, conditions, and processes after this uh, webinar. Excellent. Thank you, Jamie, for that. Uh, Alistair, maybe you are suited for this. It talks about, it says, hello, when a European company opens a branch in the UAE, can this European company register its shares in the UAE itself? Yeah, interesting question. I mean, a branch is, a, well, technically a branch doesn't really have shares. A branch is defined legally as a legal extension of its parent company. Uh, branches in the mainland are required to be registered with, with the Ministry of Economy here. Um, we, of course, assist with that. If you're going into one of the free trade zones of the branch, that process is not required. So to answer that question would depend where we're setting up the company uh, in terms of if we would officially register the branch. But um, you know, yeah, absolutely, if that individual could drop me an email as well, because I think it's quite a specific question and a couple of ways to answer it. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Romel, maybe guide some of the, the people looking at the webinar, the investors. Um, do they need to be in the country for, for setting up? At what point do they need to come? What is the process that it will take for organizing for visas? What is it that we can do for dependent visas and their family members? Yeah, yeah. so when it comes to setting up the company, the company can be set up, a free zone company particularly, can be set up without even having to come to the country. Um, so like Jamie mentioned earlier, we just need a passport copy, last entry stamp, and some passport photos, um, and some documents that we provide and assist you with to set up a company, which can be set up within three to four days. Um, the, so that's the, the, the quick part. And then the immigration card needs to be applied for as well. With COVID-19, things have slightly changed. So you need to be in the country to apply for the immigration card um, and also to apply for visas. Um, the, so that means that you have to be in the country a little bit longer. Um, that, but I know that in some free zones, they've already opened it up so we can start applying for visas outside the country as well. Um, so first part of the process is to get your trade license, then to get your immigration card, and then apply for your visas. 
once you have your visa and Emirates ID, that's when you can start applying for dependent visas for your family um, and bring them over to the country. In terms of visas, you have to be in the country once um, every 180 days. So that's obviously interesting for international clients to know. Um, and we handle the whole process. Um, I think that's one of the key factors. We're not just here to help you set up your company and, and that's it. We're with you throughout the whole journey. So even if six months down the line, you need another dependent visa, maybe you're lucky to have another child. Um, we also assist you with that as well um, and handle the whole process. Excellent. Another interesting element, Alistair, maybe is the fact that we have recently introduced the possibility of helping investors setting up their companies in Saudi Arabia. Uh, what else can we tell people looking at this webinar on, on the Saudi side of things? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we've, as a company, sort of been quietly operating in Saudi for some time now, but, but sort of publicly announced our presence earlier this year. I'm sure everyone's aware, anyone in this region will be, that Saudi Arabia is the largest economy in the GCC. So it's got a large population. It's a very exciting place to be currently. Um, it's, it's undergoing a lot of reform. They're working towards Vision 2030. In terms of company setup, uh, the options are a little bit simpler. You're only really presented with two options there. Um, expatriates can own companies over there. Um, you need to be licensed by the Ministry of Investment if you want to do it that way. There are also other avenues you can explore as well for registration. Um, I would say the, the, the pace in Saudi is slightly slower than the UAE in terms of company setup. Um, so it does take a little bit longer. It is slightly more expensive. Um, but, but yes, we're, we're on the ground. We're very, very active in Saudi and, and very busy as well. So anyone that has any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to, uh, to drop me an email. Excellent. Uh, we have a comment here from Rehema. She's saying, hi, I stepped in late, so I'm kind of lost. Will there be sharing uh, of the recording of, 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 this, of this webinar? I'm interested to register a digital marketing company. Maybe Alistair will get in touch with Rehema, yeah? We, we connect with her and, uh, and uh, we tell her the options for setting up a company. We have everybody's details. Rehema, uh, Alistair can also copy your email address there below again, because she just came in and, uh, and uh, feel free to, to get in touch with, with one of our guys here. Um, what are the company activities that can be fully owned in Saudi? Alistair, the question is from Ellen. So if you are going, if you would like to own the company yourself in Saudi Arabia, um, under the Ministry of Investment, there are a broad range of professional service activities that can be owned 100% by non-GCC nationals. So your typical consultancies, your service-based activities, anything that doesn't really involve the tangible products or tangible um, services can be owned 100%. Um, so it's similar to the UAE in that respect. Uh, UAE mainland now, you can own pretty much all the professional licenses 100%. It's a similar model in Saudi. So. If the activity is service-based, it's a very good chance that you can own it 100%. There are a couple of exceptions to that. Uh, and again, this is where it does differ to the UAE. So Elaine, if, if you would like to drop me an email, um, I'd be happy to, um, to answer that question. Excellent. Uh, Jamie, there's a good question here about financial services type of companies. It says, hello, I want to set up a company in order to buy and sell financial instruments like Forex via applications to customers. This signal generate via automated algorithm tradings. Do I need a special license? What kind of license applies to such type of activity, Jamie? Great question. Um, for this type of activity, it's quite regulated. Um, as in essence, you are going through obviously uh, the central bank. Now, so in order for central bank to govern this type of activity, there are certain zones which uh, require you to undergo registration there. One of those would be DIFC located within Dubai. Um, depending on the different activities available and depending on how the company is operating will dictate the final activity per se. You are required to rent some form of physical office space. You should obtain one residency visa in order to open up a company bank account. They will also look for an overview of the company in terms of how it operates and some form of a business plan with the projection of one to three years. Um, there's obviously additional requirements. The more we understand the business a bit more, the more we can pull out exactly the conditions based on the activity type. And um, so again, by all means, drop us um, uh, an email or I'm more than happy to connect with you after to find out more information. Yeah, he's actually adding a little more. He says, we don't access client bank accounts or their monies. We just send notifications for buying and selling financial instruments. 
via their application. This is an interesting case. It's more in an advisory, if you will, in right. terms of developing. So one could argue that they could put that through a free zone, through a strategy advisory services activity. Again, we'd need to look into it a little bit more just to confirm that activity. And we'd also need to perhaps set up a meeting with the bank prior to obviously um, registering the company, because at the end of the day, do you want to ensure that you can open that company bank account? And by doing so, as part of our service, we're more than happy to arrange a meeting with the bank, whether it's on a Zoom call if you're overseas, or if you're within Dubai, arranging a personal face-to-face -face so we can discuss um, post-licensing as well, so you are covered from that aspect. Uh, Ali Reza, please get in touch with Jamie. Jamie's emails are there. Maybe write your email again there, just in case. Yes. Jamie on, on the chat. And remember the name, Ali Reza. We have his email address. We will contact you and give you more information uh, on this. Um, we have another gentleman asking, I want to set up an electrical construction and service business in Dubai. Romel, what would be the best location for this? You're on mute. This sort of company would need to be um, set up in the mainland. So with the Department of Economic Development, um, because obviously when it comes to construction and so forth, well, particularly if it's going to be taking place in the UAE, um, if it's taking place outside of the UAE, then there could be some other solutions. But any sort of work that's done in Dubai would have to go through a mainland license because you're going to have to operate in the mainland. Um, so BED um, with a local sponsor um, would be the route to go down for that trade license. But like I said, we can get some more information and maybe get some more information from a room on where he's going to be operating, um, what sort of business he's looking to do. I think that's more of a, a discussion to be had directly with Arun. Yeah, Arun, get in touch with Romel. Romel will can also approach Arun and, and send him more information. Yeah. Maybe also one for you, Romel. It says, what do freelancer makeup artists, counselors or coaches need as a license? Oh, this is in interesting um, as well, because technically speaking, this also needs to be a mainland trade license, because when you're doing any sort of makeup artist, you're coaching someone, you're going to be doing this in the gym. Um, you know, this could be done um, anywhere in Dubai, but you're, you're actually physically present. You're physically doing something. So this should be done with a mainland license. The, the solution probably best for this would be the co-working mainland license, because you don't need to get an office space, which is probably not going to be required. Um, as it's a professional activity, you don't need a 51% shareholder. You can own 100% of the shares. You just need a local service agent. Um, but this is um, one of those sort of trade licenses that people normally feel that they want to do a free zone or can do a free zone. But technically speaking, it's a mainland license. They're going to be operating in the mainland. So it has to go through DED. Um, one question he says here, what are, what are the advantages of setting up through you in Creative Zone? aside from going maybe directly to a government authority. Alistair? Uh, excellent question. I, I touched on it um, a little bit earlier, that impartial advice you get from us. Um, at the end of the day, we, we work for our clients. We don't work for the government jurisdiction. So our advice is always tailored and based on your requirements. Uh, you touched on it initially, uh, Ramel. Uh, we go so much further now than just the business setup. It's it's actually one of our slogans as a company. Business setup really is just the beginning. We're not in, interested as a company just setting you up. That's really a means to an end. What we're interested in is making sure you have all the resources at your disposal to ensure that you're successful. Whether that's media and marketing help, whether that's sales pipeline help, we've got a business center if you need meeting rooms to meet your clients, tax and accounting support, legal advice, insurance advice, getting your bank accounts open. Everything we do and all of our integration partners are designed around our customers and ensuring that they're successful. So that would, that's for me what, what would be the biggest value add. We're not just here to set up the license. We're here to ensure that, that the business is a success and that you have everything available at really the touch of your fingertips um, to ensure it is. So Definitely, I think this is where we add the most value. It's it's not just now setting up, it's it's making sure that you're renewing for the second, third, fourth, and fifth years as well. Exactly. Uh, Jamie, there's other structures that we can help clients with. You personally are very good at uh, these other more sophisticated structures, such as holding trusts, special purpose vehicles in ADGM. Can you tell the viewers a little bit on, on those type of structures? Yeah, of course. Um, so as part of our service setup, um, depending on how the company is going to be structured, one of the key operating ways which we set up a company sometimes, if it's an onshore regulated business, one who wants to secure those assets under a different law jurisdiction. 
for example, the local law, obviously being Sharia, if people want to mitigate that and ensure that they ring fence those assets, how they can do so is by simply registering a company within Abu Dhabi Global Market. The sole purpose of that allows the ultimate beneficiary owner to secure the assets under the UK common law, which obviously follows certain precedents. In addition to that, if someone wants to secure an SPV, an SPV is basically a special purpose vehicle. The purpose of that is in order to register it, you must identify the purpose. In one case in point, if you wanted to own the 51% shareholding of a mainland company, you want to ensure that they isolated the Emirati and have the full control, if you will, they would by doing so by registering a company with an ADGM and by owning the 49% control. As a result of that, it gives them the whole ability to maneuver the company and own assets across the UAE. Excellent. All right, well, I'm getting sort of to the end of the topics. I'm reading most of the questions that were being put out there. Maybe some final words of, 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 of conclusions. Uh, Romel, what would you tell people looking at this webinar? How is it that you can help people looking at this webinar? Most of our attendees are from abroad, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe. What would you say to them? Yeah, no, I think that the, the thing is, when you're looking to set up a company, we have the experience, like Alistair touched on, we've been doing this for over 10 years. Um, so we've, we've experienced every different scenario. We understand what your requirements are, what sort of restrictions you're going to have to do in business when it comes to banking and that sort of thing. And we're here to, we're, we're on the ground presence. We, we, we've got our, you know, we're, our feet to the ground. We, we know what's going on with the government. We know what sort of situations can be avoided by certain situations. And the main focus for any business owner is to focus on their business, how to bring in revenue, how to run their business. They don't need to be worrying about how to set up the company. What sort of structure do I need? How am I going to get a bank account open? How am I going to get my visa sorted? What do I need when I need to employ more people? Do I need an office space? That's what we can handle. Take that stress away from you so you can focus on your own business and grow in that. So that's the key part of, I think, what we offer as a service is making sure that you can focus on your business and we focus on what we have the expertise in. Excellent. Alistair, what will be your final recommendations for people uh, looking at this webinar? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just to sort of echo um, uh, Ramel's comments there. Um, it's, a, it's a tricky thing setting up a company here. It's, it's nowhere near as straightforward and as simple as other places in the world, like the UK and the US. There are a lot of things to consider and hiring or getting the advice of a consultant such as Credit Zone, I think is crucial because setting up the business here in the wrong way can cost you tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dirhams, both in lost opportunities and changing licenses, etc. So getting that initial advice when you are looking to set up here, I think is crucial. And as Ramel said, we've, we've been here over 10 years. We've seen it all. We've seen, we've had some amazing success stories. We've also unfortunately seen business potentially not work out. So we've got that experience that you can leverage on. Um, so I would say anyone that's even thinking about it, um, there is no better place in the UAE, not only to set up a business, but if you're thinking of changing countries, uh, as I said, I've lived here 25 years, you as well, Lorenzo have been here. A number of years as well there really is no better place to to live and work here um so anyone that has any questions at all as i said all our consultations are free we offer free impartial advice um please please get in touch and to all the attend <coughs> attendees sorry for that we have you have all of the three of them their email address is there so please feel free to connect with them jamie you have an incredible background there with uh, overseeing the skyline of dubai looks like a like a like a poster more than, than the real life. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what was your final conclusions to people looking here? Sure, I'm actually in the office at the moment. I had to brush up on my background. So Steve, if you're watching, it's not the white background. I'm in the office today in the business center. So if anyone is actually within Dubai, please feel free to, to drop down and say hello if you want to have a meeting at any point. And we're located in downtown Dubai in Boulevard Plaza Tower One. We'll share the details after and just on the 17th floor. And to follow suit, I mean, from, from Alistair and Ramel, quite difficult. I mean, they really nailed, uh, nailed it in the, in, in the coffin there, to be honest with you. Uh, I implore you to reach out to us and speak to us because, as, as Alistair mentioned and touched off, a key point there is it can cost you X amount um, of setting up a company which goes wrong and you have to do it again. You want to do it right the first time and let it run smoothly. And um, so ideally, you want to find out, identify what you're looking to achieve, speak to us, reach out to us, and then we can advise on what options are available to you, and then we can take it from there. Excellent. Alistair, Jamie, Romel, thank you so much for your time. To all the attendees, we have about 50 people connected. 
We encourage you to get in touch with Alistair, Jamie, and Romel. You have their email addresses. We have your details as well. We'll, we'll reach out to you to see if you need any further information. Thank you so much for connecting. We are here at Creative Zone to help you throughout this journey. If you're looking to set up a business here in Dubai and in the UAE, we're here to help. Thank you so much, everybody, for connecting. Until the next one. Thanks, Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.